Welcome to the Biobalance Healthcast, episode number 471. Your erectile dysfunction may not require a doctor. Biobalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at Biobalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. ED is something that, that some men find awkward to talk about, but most men worry about as they get older and they find themselves not having satisfying erections, not having erections that are firm enough or last long enough, and they, they worry about, am I broken? Is something wrong? Do I need to go to the doctor? And Many men do go to the doctor and they get the little blue pill or they get some variant of it, which helps with their erections. But what we want to talk about this week is the, the reality that especially early on when you begin to flirt with whether or not that's becoming a problem for you, there are things that you should look at about your own lifestyle, your own habits, the way that you live to see whether or not those things are causing the problem because it is possible that they are and that you can correct those and never have to go see a doctor or get a prescription medicine to treat this issue. This issue is one that is generated because you are aging, but also because of the way you're living your life. So this week we wanna go through several examples of things that we know contribute to the ED problem in, in men and talk to you about what you can do instead of what you are doing that may take this off, off the table for you. So, so when men come to see me for pellets, mm -hmm. generally they've seen a doctor or two who have told them that they do need testosterone, they don't need testosterone. Testosterone does help erections in most cases, but it is the final step. It's not the first step. And it primarily helps uh, libido issues. It as also helps to blood flow. Yeah. So it does help. It, it does both, I know. But, but it helps libido, sex drive, and it helps and it also helps ED and it helps erections. So knowing that, but that's that's important, but that's more the last step than the first step. So Yeah, you don't want to go there until you need to go there. Right. I mean, and I don't want to treat somebody who could just change their lifestyle or change a few medications and they don't really need testosterone yet. And because you don't want to start it till you really need it. And there's some men that Come, that come to me who have high blood pressure. So, I was just going to say, one of the more common issues is, is blood pressure. And a lot issues. of young men have high blood pressure. And mm -hmm. they're taking medication for their blood pressure. And there's certain medications. The, the primary culprit that I see is lisinopril. Lisinopril is a medication that drops the blood pressure all over the body, but mostly in the pelvis. So, not, so the blood pressure doesn't have enough pressure to cause an erection. So they, they get fixed for their blood pressure, but then they have ED, and then they go get another pill, you know, for the ED, instead of so you, trying to change the medication. you play chemistry set. You just right. add more and more chemicals to try to get the results. And, and, and there are, like, two major categories of blood pressure medicines, what, what mm -hmm. you call ARBs. ARBs. And what you call ACE inhibitors. Yes. And, and your concern <laughs> is that the ACE inhibitors will contribute mm -hmm. to the ED issues if you're taking them. So um, lisinopril is an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. ACE, ACE. -E. Mm -hmm. and, and that and the beta blockers, but like metoprolol, there are some beta blockers for just blood pressure. Those two cause ED and some of the others do not. So the ARBs do not. Mm -hmm. And so we try to get people to get their doctors to switch them before they start testosterone, before they start anything else, to um, cardiazem. So, so or, do they work equally well? I mean, do some men, like beta blockers, mm -hmm. prevent you from spiking, from your blood pressure from shooting up, or they, or they reduce the chances of that happening? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're on ACE inhibitors and beta blockers, could you respond as well to an ARB? You, you could, and that's what we like to try. We, like, we don't change their blood pressure medicine because that's an 
that that's stepping you, over the line. You send me to talk to my regular right. physician. The doctor that put you on the blood pressure medicine should, they may not know that this is causing the ED uh, because it's not widely published. And that's not their main focus. And that, that's they're not, not worried they're, about whether you get they're an worried about, They're worried about your heart blowing out. Right, or you having a stroke or something like that. So they, I'm just trying to get people to go away from the lisinopril's of the world and some right. of the beta blockers and, and try something else. Now, not always. That doesn't always work. Right. And that's why I'm not in control of well, that. Well, you're not part. a specialist in that. That's right. But you, you know enough to, to suggest to people, at least check this out with your physician mm -hmm. to see if it's a better path for you. That's right. And so if you're on those medications and you're worrying that that may be causing your ED mm -hmm. and it may just cause you to have um, an erection for less time or for, for you not to be able to have as hard an erection, however, that may be disturbing to you, then right. you do need to talk to your internist or your family doctor to change that medication to something that will not harm your, your erections. Because yeah. that's just something you just don't need. Well, some men to, complain because they, they have what they think is an adequate erection, and then in the middle of the sex act, it just goes away. Right. It's like a switch throws, and it's mm -hmm. gone. But they're not finished, mm -hmm. it, but, but they're finished. And that's it's very just frustrating. Gone. Yeah, for them and for their partners. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's something that if we can just change the medication you're on mm -hmm. and bring back your normal erections, then... Then we don't have to do anything else. So an That's awful lot of men important. are on blood pressure medicines, mm -hmm. and classically, doctors will tell them, "Watch caffeine, watch salt, lose weight, exercise." Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've got to do some things because it comes down to lifestyle. Right. I mean, you can actually get off of blood pressure medicines in some cases if you get down to ideal weight. Now, I know some people who have already gotten enough stiffness in their in their blood vessels. Mm -hmm that they can't get off blood pressure medicine totally. So, so there, as I understand it, there are two concerns when you're, when you're looking at blood pressure regulation. Mm -hmm. One is the resting blood pressure, that's mm -hmm. the blood in your vessels the diastolic all the time, blood pressure. which is the lower number mm -hmm. when they show you the, the formula. Mm -hmm. And the other one is the, the pulsing or beating pressure when systolic it pushes. Systolic blood pressure, that's the top number. Okay. And the diastolic is the bottom number. And, and so the goal is to have your blood pressure be between 110 on top and 70 on the bottom? That's I mean that, ideal. Uh -huh. You probably didn't have that since you were 30. So And, and those I numbers mean, have recently changed. I mean, in the last three years, the, the Heart Association has dropped those numbers. Well, that's what they and dropped we, them to. They should, in my book, they should be less than 140 over 90. Right. 140 over 90 is over that can be dangerous. Right. So then you need to drop it below 140 over 90. But the biggest problem I see is that their their doctors drop them so, so low, low, they can't have an erection. They're tired. They're, you know, they, every time they stand up, they Sluggish, get dizzy. Sluggish, lethargic, yeah. This, I mean, and it's all about their blood pressure medicine. Right. They are on too much or they're on the wrong kind. All right. So that's something that you have to discuss with your internist, your family doctor, and say, look, I don't want to take a blood pressure medicine to save my life so that I can have no life at all. I mean, really, to have no quality of life. So, so you have to have something in between. It has to help your blood pressure, but it can't, it can't wipe out the rest of your quality of life. It's a sweet spot. Right. Where it's you have a good a sweet, quality of life and spot. you still have, exactly. And, and so one of the things that we often mention when we talk about ED concerns, when you have these conversations with your physician or if you have a heart specialist, mm -hmm. you need to make them aware that you're having ED concerns because it's a five-year early warning for mm -hmm. having cardiovascular issues and heart attacks and strokes. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the statistical data shows that pretty strongly. Yeah. And so if you're on blood pressure medicine, or if you need to be on blood pressure medicine, that should also be part of the conversation. One of the, one of the symptoms, one of the elements is going to be that you have ED issues. So when they try to find that sweet spot and balance it, you want to take care of both pieces of that. But not ignore that, that ED is a strong indicator that you are on the highway to a heart attack. The other, the other issue is sometimes they just hand you the blue pill to fix the ED. Then you're on two, two meds exactly. instead of one. So you can ask them nicely, could I just change blood pressure medicines so that I don't have to take the Viagra or, or the Cialis? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's also an, an option for you to, to ask. It's your body. Well, you can ask your doctor. I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not in favor of you going, I want this. Rah, rah, you know, that, you know, it's not about that. It's so, not about power. It's about asking or putting that idea in your doctor's mind. But it's, it's also not necessarily about blood pressure. 
No. I mean, a lot of guys that are having these problems aren't having heart attack issues or blood pressure issues. They're having other concerns, one of which is if they're taking anti-inflammatory meds. Mm -hmm. uh, right, now, right now, medicine is really focused on the importance of inflammation mm -hmm. as, as an issue in your body and, and that you'll live longer and be healthier if you can reduce the inflammation mm -hmm. in your body. I mean, all the different things that we talk about and, come back to that. And usually it means weight loss. To decrease your inflammation, usually being fat increases inflammation, but being being uh, traumatized, having a bad joint, having uh, something that aches and hurts mm -hmm. every day, that also increases inflammation. But we often give NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. So what they do is they block prostaglandins, which cause pain. Well, you need some prostaglandins to have an erection. So you don't want to block all of them, and you may want to hold the dose on the day or the or the timing if you take it twice a day before you're going to have intercourse because you need because if you take it then it's going to reduce your chances of having a successful intercourse right so, so if you know that you, and and also when doctors give you a prescription they write on a little bottle that you get from the pharmacy take this three times a day or take this in the morning or take this mm -hmm. that's a general rule mm -hmm. and if you know today is the day that my wife and I are planning to have sex, don't take the damn pill in the morning or, or in or the evening whenever they've before, told you to. Before you're going to have sex. But wait until after you have sex right. and then take it. That's right. Okay. And same with blood pressure medicine. You can always time that after sex mm -hmm. so that you're not at the, you know, if you time it right before, your blood pressure is going to be the lowest it's going to be all day. Yeah. So that's probably not a good idea. So timing of your medications is important. And um, other drugs, illicit drugs are a problem. Let's Interestingly okay. enough, people think that if they take cocaine, they're going to have this great, amazing sex life. Well, they're not because cocaine is a vasoconstrictor, and it's going to make all their blood vessels constrict, not dilate. You need your blood vessels to dilate to fill up the penis to have an erection. Is it so, just cocaine? Does marijuana do the same thing? Not Marijuana works differently, uh, and it depends. Now we have many different kinds of specific types of marijuana, so I'm not... A, an expert on that. Yeah, but in some I. cases, if you use enough uh, weed or marijuana or THC, I'm not talking about plain CBD, but THC, then you can cause your body to make a lot of prolactin, which is what gives men, men or one of the things that gives men, man boobs. So okay. too much, and it gives them too much estrogen. So too much estrogen is a negative. So if you start to get man boobs, you're not going to have erections or right. not have good ones. Yeah, because you have too much estrogen. Yeah. And it's, and it's stimulated by the prolactin from the THC. Now, I'm not saying that every type causes that, but right. you have to watch out for that. That's the sign. If you get man boobs, maybe you're on the wrong type or maybe you shouldn't take it at all. So I'm a normal guy. I come to see a physician. I, <laughs> I need to tell a physician in your medical appraisal, or, mm -hmm. uh, appraisal of me or assessment mm -hmm. of what's going on with me. You need to know that I smoke marijuana on a regular basis mm -hmm. because... Just like any other drug. Just like any other drug. Now, if I tell you that, can you call the cops on me? No. No. I mean, that's that's I a can't. reason why people people avoid telling you things because they're embarrassed about it or because they fear other consequences You're that only get harming triggered. yourself. I, I hear that. <laughs> I just want you to say but that. It's, the only time we would have to do anything would be if someone said they were going to kill themselves with the drug. Right. If they said they were going to commit suicide with the drug. So you have a duty to warn. I have a duty to warn someone, and usually that's the authorities, that they are going to do that or a family member mm -hmm. so that they can be hospitalized so that they don't kill themselves. But if you that's my only that's my only necessary legal obligation. I I don't in fact I don't have a legal obligation to tell anyone about anything in your chart. Right. And, nor, and you don't have the release to do that unless they give you permission explicitly. That's right. And oftentimes I don't write it down. I have little code things that mm. I write in that don't say anything to anybody but me. So if I do cocaine or I do heroin, mm. I do meth, I do, I do marijuana, mm -hmm. any of those things, I literally should discuss with you. When you should we're talking because about then I'm treatment. going to be running around trying to figure out what's wrong with you and it's going to be that. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm treating everything else. I'm going to miss the big diagnosis. Right. And I'm going to be treating the wrong thing. So... That's like giving somebody the wrong clue to a mystery mm -hmm. or leaving a clue out. Yeah. You need all the clues to be a doctor and figure out what's wrong with your patient. So that's very important. Okay. What about dehydration? That's, that's a biggie. And to me, that's huge because even young men 
go out, they play soccer, they're sweating, they replace water, they don't replace, they don't always replace their electrolytes, electrolytes. so the water goes right through yeah. them, and so they don't hold on to the water, so their their tank is low, their whole their whole blood volume is low. Does caffeine affect your electrolytes? Um, caffeine is a diuretic, so yeah. it makes you urinate more, so it makes you dehydrated. And if so you're not replacing tea. them. And so does all, so do all of those caffeine, um, those caffeine. Like monster drinks. Monster and, so, yeah, monster yeah. soda, monster uh, energy drink. Uh -huh. All of those decrease your blood volume, which may not be bad for your blood pressure. It'll drop it a little bit, but it is really bad for having erections because you need your blood volume to fill it up. I mean, yeah. if, you, if you don't have enough blood, then you're not going to get an erection. So you have to not only give yourself water, but you have to give yourself electrolytes like that the little tablet's called N-U-U-N. Yeah. You don't have to take G2, which has sugar in it. You can take something without it, like those tablets. They just have electrolytes in them. So one out of every, I, when I play golf in the summer. So power, not one power out of drinks, every, like energy power drinks, but drinks, sports drinks, like Gatorade, mm -hmm. and that's they a brand name, but there are others. Uh, they have electrolytes, but they have sugar. So if you're going to go for a Gatorade, you would go to G2, so you don't get too much sugar. Okay. But if you're, you don't want any sugar, and you just want the electrolytes and the vitamins that you're losing with exercise and sweating, uh, then you can put it in like every third bottle of water that you drink, or the equivalent. Like a powder While you're that exercise, you mix it's, in? It's like a tablet, and you break it up and put it into your water bottle. Okay. So I do that when I play golf and I play better because I'm not like, oh, I can't get to the 17th hole. Yeah. You know, I mean, about then I just crash if I don't have my electrolytes. But worse yet, you so can't minutes, go home and have sex after you've sweated for, for all of your electrolytes. For a perfect storm. And, you can't finish your golf game. You can't get an erection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I think they can probably finish their golf game, but ah, they probably can't finish right. everything else. But that's something to think about. And all the foods and, and, all the drinks that we drink often dehydrate us. So you have to think about that and replace it with water and sometimes electrolytes. So another repetitive issue that we discuss in our podcast that impact men's health, women too, but we're talking about men today, is the amount of stress that they have in their lives. Mm -hmm. Stress can impact your ability to have an erection. Mm -hmm. if, if you're overstressed, even though, I mean, I mean, like if you have performance anxiety, if you're uh, worried about being able to be around. I mean, once you start thinking about, it, am I going to be able to do this? You're not likely to be able to do it. <laughs> That's right. The fear. It, I mean, it's a paradox. Uh, it causes a great amount of fear. And then you also, I mean, physiologically, that constricts all your blood vessels. Uh -huh. <laughs> so a constricted, a, a blood vessel that is really small can't push fluid into the, into the penis. Well, you know, we talked about the flight or fight response and, mm -hmm. and stress mm -hmm. generating that panic reaction or emergency reaction Adrenaline. where all of your uh, oxygen is pushed into the upper part of your body so you have the so, ability so to, to breathe and move and, and, and so on muscles. but it takes it away from your abdomen mm -hmm. and your digestive tract mm -hmm. and your genitalia because they need it somewhere else under stress under stress in the old days when uh -huh. we were cave people you shouldn't be having sex if, if the bear's coming after you <laughs> basically pardon me you know par you yeah. know that that that's one of those things that if you're running from a bear, then the last thing on your mind should be sex. Right. And it probably is. Right. <laughs> and that's kind of a natural response. Mm -hmm. But nowadays we have stress all the time. So even men have to learn to de-stress. They have to learn to relax. do yoga. I mean, God forbid. It's one of the reasons to do foreplay. Yeah. Just calm down and get refocused. That's right. That's true. And, I, and uh, that's a, a very good way to kind of chill and let everything normalize before you actually go into the act. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's hard to describe, and I don't think you should take medicine for, <laughs> for, for anxiety or stress unless your doctor thinks that's the only way. But I think that that would help if you could calm down. So another issue is obesity mm -hmm. in men and sedentary lifestyles. Mm -hmm. The fatter you get, the less you move around, the less physically active you are, the combination of those two ingredients, putting on that extra weight and being sedentary, impact it, it, it you convert more of your testosterone to estrogen mm -hmm. and you become less functional the more estrogen Sexual you have function. the more man boobs you have the more belly fat you have the the more estrogen that is made in those in those areas the less free testosterone can actually work it binds up your testosterone so that actually lowers the testosterone level which then has the effect on your 
on, on your erections. So what we're talking about today are things that you should be aware of that can impact whether or not you develop ED, what you can do about them without having to go see a doctor about it. I mean, if, if you know that being sedentary can cause you to lose the ability to have sex, get up and move around, do something about it. If you know that using illicit or illegal drugs can adversely impact your sexual performance, think that through. Which would you rather have? What, what Over time, which is more important? If you know that blood pressure medicines are uh, a contributing factor, discuss those with your physician when you go to see your physician. We didn't even talk about alcohol and, and smoking. Both of them do not make you sexier. They make you less sexy, and, and they affect your erection. So it is not smart to drink a lot and then expect to have sex. You're not going to. It's yeah. not going to work. So K those are Kissing a smoker is like licking an ashtray. Yeah. Yeah. It is, but that's not, that's really not what we were talking about. Well, but that's a, that's a sidebar. <laughs> yeah, sidebar. Uh, but there's one more, too, that, that I want to make sure that you have an opportunity to talk about. If you don't eat protein, if you're a vegan, that can affect your erections. There are some vegans that eat eggs and, and uh, milk products mm -hmm. and fish, and they're okay. But the, but vegetarians that eat just vegetables and just fruit. Just a total plant-based, plant -based, fruit based you need protein to have an erection. It's really, it's, it really, you don't have the right amino acids to actually get the nitric oxide that you need to dilate your blood vessels. So that's one way to block your, your sexuality. And you need to have the right protein. So add some eggs, add some fish. You don't have to eat red meat necessarily, mm -hmm. but that would help a little bit. But you have to eat protein. And um, So it's all about balance. Beans aren't going to do it. Beans are not enough. No, they're not enough. And so, I mean, it's just, you just have to have the right composite of essential proteins, meaning the ones we can't make inside our bodies. Mm -hmm. And those come in other forms outside of fruit and vegetables. So having a regular, successful, active sex life as you age, staying healthy so that that can happen, will be important to you as a man. And as you get older and these things start to contribute to your loss uh, of erections, there are things that you can do about that if you know. And now you know. And Thank you won't you have to listening. see a doctor until you've figured out all of this, mm -hmm. fixed it, and then if you still have the issues, then your doctor can help with either testosterone or Viagra or that type of medication or both. All right. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.